Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. In today's video, we're doing part two of neoplasms. We're going to be talking about locating codes for neoplasm. The first step in locating a code for neoplasms is to refer to the main term for the morphological type, carcinoma, sarcoma, leukemia, etc. So when we know the behavior type, we refer to that first, not the neoplasm table. You go to the main term that describes the neoplasm. So in the alphabetic index of disease and injuries, we go to that main term and then we, we review the sub terms. Okay? For some types, a specific diagnosis is provided. For example, the diagnosis of renal cell carcinoma. In the alphabetic index, you go to your main term carcinoma, your subterm renal cell, and it will give you a code. Now, when the site is not listed and a subterm or a specific code is not given in the alphabetic index, it will give you a cross reference to the neoplasm table that is in volume two of your index. Cross references should always be followed. The neoplasm table is located directly behind, in your alphabetic index, directly behind the letter Z, but it's still in volume two. And it lists the anatomical sites alphabetically to the far left. The indention levels have the same significance as those used elsewhere in the alphabetic index. Columns to the right on that neoplasm table indicate the type of behavior for each of the sites. And remember we talked about the different behaviors in part one of neoplasms. To use the table, coders must first locate the anatomic site in the list and move across the page to the behavior type and then select the appropriate code. For each site, there are six possible code numbers. According to whether the neoplasm in question is benign, malignant, in situ, of uncertain behavior, or unspecified nature. Codes listed with a dash following the code have a required fifth character for laterality. Codes from the neoplasm table should be verified, as all codes, be verified in your tabular list. So what are the basic types of malignant neoplasms? There are two, solid and hematopoietic lymphatic, blood and lymph nodes. Solid tumors have a single localized point of origin and are considered to be primary neoplasms of that site. Solid tumors tend to spread to adjacent or remote sites with such sites classified as secondary or metastatic neoplasms. For example, a diagnosis of carcinoma of the lung with metastasis to the brain. That indicates that the primary neoplasm is of the lung and it metastasized to a secondary site, the brain. Lymphatic and hematopoietic neoplasms arise in the reticular endothelial and lymphatic systems and the blood forming tissues. These neoplasms differ from solid malignant neoplasms in several ways, including the following. One, they may arise in a single site or in several sites simultaneously because think about it, hematopoietic and lymphatic are blood. Where's blood in your body? All over. And where are your lymph nodes? All over, okay? They may arise in a single site or several sites simultaneously. Tumor cells often circulate in large numbers in the bloodstream and the lymphatic system rather than remaining confined to a single site. And in spreading to other sites in the hematopoietic and lymphatic system is not considered to be secondary, but is also classified as a primary neoplasm. It's still the first site. It might be blood in the head and neck, but blood when it spreads to lower body, it's still primary because it's still in the blood. Coding of solid malignant neoplasms. A solid malignant neoplasm may spread from its site of origin by either direct extension, spreading, or met metastasis. Direct extension is the invasion of adjacent sites. Metastasis, 
refers to the spread to distant sites and the establishment of a new center of malignancy. ICD-10 does not make a distinction between these two types of extensions. The term metastatic or secondary are generally used interchangeably. What about overlapping sites? When a primary malignant neoplasm overlaps two or more continuous, which means right next to each other, sites, it is classified to the subcategory code number eight, signifying overlapping lesion, unless the combination is specifically indexed elsewhere. When there are multiple neoplasms of the same site that are not contiguous, such as tumors in different quadrants of the same breast, codes for each site should be assigned. Okay, contiguous just means I think of the intestines and how the intestines are just, I call it 22 feet of chitlins, okay, because it continuously runs and you don't know where it starts or where it ends, it tends to overlap. And those would be a considered, those are an example of overlapping where you'd use the, the um, subcategory code eight. Malignancy in two or more non-contiguous sites. A patient may have more than one malignant tumor in the same organ. These tumors may present different primary cancers or metastatic diseases depending on the site. When the documentation is unclear, the provider should be queried regarding the status of each tumor in order to select the correct code. When more than one primary cancer occurs in the same organ system, these are called synchronous primary cancers. This condition may occur in the lungs where the target organ, in this case the respiratory epithelium, is attacked or altered by an inciting agent such as tobacco smoke. However, the physician must make this designation as to whether one of the tumors represents a secondary primary cancer or metastasis. Okay. What about neoplasms that are described as metastatic? The term metastatic or metastasis are often used ambiguously in describing neoplastic disease, sometimes meaning that the site is primary and sometimes meaning that it's secondary. When the diagnostic statement is not clear in this regard, the coder should review the medical record for further information. And when none is available, however, the following guidelines apply. All right, let's talk about metastatic 2. The statement metastatic 2 indicates that the site mentioned is secondary. For example, a, diagnos a diagnosis of metastatic carcinoma to the lung is coded as a secondary malignant neoplasm of the lung. A code for the primary neoplastic site should also be assigned when the primary neoplasm is still present. A history code from category Z85, personal history of malignant neoplasm, should be assigned when the primary neoplasm has been excised or eradicated. The fourth character of category Z85 indicates the body system where the prior neoplasm occurred and the fifth and sixth character indicate the specific organ or site involved. Ordinarily, no history code is assigned when the patient has had a prior benign or in situ neoplasm or neoplasm of uncertain behavior. Don't worry about a history code for those. We don't code histories on those. That's benign, in situ, or um, neoplasm of uncertain behavior. All right, what about metastatic from? The statement metastatic from indicates that the site mentioned is the primary site. For example, a diagnosis of metastatic carcinoma from the breast indicates that the breast is the primary site. A code for the metastatic site should also be assigned. And what about multiple metastatic sites? When two or more sites are described as metastatic, in the diagnostic statement, each of the stated sites should be coded as secondary or metastatic. A code should also be assigned for the primary site when this information is available. It should be coded C80.1 when it's not. Okay. All right, let's look at a single metastatic site. Single metastatic site. 
when only one site is described as metastatic without any further qualifications and no more definitive information can be obtained by reviewing the medical record, the following steps should be followed. First, refer to the morphological type in your alphabetic index, carcinoma sarcoma, okay, and code it to the primary condition for that site. For example, a diagnosis of metastatic renal cell carcinoma of the lung indicates that the primary site is the kidney renal cell except renal pelvis uh, is the kidney and the secondary site is the lung so the correct coding for this is C64.9 malignant neoplasm of the kidney except renal pelvis unspecified site and C78.00 secondary malignant neoplasm of the lung unspecified site. Now when a specific site for the morphological type is not indicated in a code entry or is not indexed, assign the code for the unspecified site within the anatomical site. For example, oat cell carcinoma is indexed to C34.90, malignant neoplasm of bronchus or lung unspecified, unspecified site, when no more specific sites is stated. Number two, when the morphology type is not stated or the only code that can be obtained is either C80.0 or C80.1, coded as a primary neoplasm unless the site is one of the following. Okay, unless it's one of the following, which means these sites tend to be secondary. Bone, brain, diaphragm, heart, liver, lymph nodes, mediastinum, meninges, peritoneum, pleural, retroperitoneum, spinal cord, and sites classified to C76. Malignant neoplasms of these um, sites are classified as secondary when not otherwise specified, except for the neoplasm of liver. ICD-10-CM now provides a code, C22.9, malignant neoplasm of liver, not specified as primary or secondary for use with this situation, okay? When there is no site stated, code C80.0, disseminated malignant neoplasm unspecified, is for use only in those cases when the patient has advanced metastatic disease and no known primary or secondary sites are specified. And that does happen. They know they got cancer, they know it's spreading, but they don't know where the primary or secondary or whether this site that they're at today, whether it's primary or secondary. So it should not be used in place of assigning a code for the primary site and all known secondary sites. Code C80.1, malignant primary neoplasm unspecified, equates to cancer unspecified. This code should only be used when no determination can be made as to the primary site of the malignancy. This code should rarely be used in the inpatient setting because remember in the inpatient setting, they've had time to, to test and check, okay? Code C79.9, secondary malignant neoplasm of unspecified site is assigned when no site is identified for the secondary neoplasm. And when no site is indicated in the diagnostic statement, but the morphology type is qualified as metastatic. The code provided for the morphological type is assigned for the primary diagnoses, along with an additional code for the secondary neoplasm of unspecified site. For example, a diagnosis of metastatic apocrine adenocarcinoma with no site specified is coded as a primary malignant neoplasm of the skin site unspecified, C44.99. And an additional code, C79.9, is assigned for the secondary neoplasm. And it tells you how to refer to your neoplasm table. Go to adenocarcinoma because it specified that your diagnosis was metastatic apocrine adenocarcinoma. So you go to your main term, adenocarcinoma, apocrine, and then unspecified site, and it gives you C44.99. All right, guys, 
That's it. The key to locating neoplasms is go to your morphological type first. Carcinoma, uh, however they describe neoplasm, however they describe the cancer. Look that up in your alphabetic index first and then look under your subterms for the specific body part or type and then it then will refer you if it's not there to the neoplasm table but you must first look up your morphological type of your neoplasms okay and then refer to your neoplasm table and then look for the body part and then the behavior all right guys i hope i broke this down in detail enough for you guys to to fully follow all right i'll see you in part three i do have um, a lesson plan and some exercises for locating neoplasms and so if you want to practice exercises on this email me at codemastercoach at gmail.com and request CPT volume one. All right, guys, that's it. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.